When it comes to battling the pandemic in Canada, I hope we can all agree on the fact that what we should be doing is actually going after the trouble spots, dealing with the actual problems, the people who are going to be hard hit by the pandemic, by the coronavirus, the people who are most at risk and who could tragically die of COVID-19. We're learning more and more about how this virus works. The first wave, awful stuff, and we had no clue what was going on. Medical experts said, we don't know how to treat this stuff. But I've had the privilege of speaking with a number of doctors who are actually on the front lines and they've been treating coronavirus patients. And they say, more or less, well, we got this now. We figured out how things work. We figured out how to treat patients. Yes, it's true questions about long COVID and obviously these vaccines, those questions are not fully answered. But in terms of what steroids to give people and when and how much and so forth, well, they've largely answered a lot of those questions and things are going pretty well. People are coming into the hospital, but more of them are leaving. It is not the death sentence that it used to be. So the people who are actually treating coronavirus patients, they have a lot of positive stories to tell. That news isn't getting out there as much as it should. But the one thing those doctors do caution is that long-term care homes, nursing homes, the elderly, they still are very much at risk. They are our most vulnerable. Now, we've known that though for quite some time. We're just learning it even more now. And the question is, why didn't government do more to prevent what we're seeing in the second wave right now? And the majority of those deaths are people who are much older, over 70, over 80 people in long-term care in nursing homes. One example, back in March in Ontario, at the end of March, they announced a $17 billion COVID package. Okay, great, $17 billion to address the problem, right? Well, hold on a second though. Most of that again was economic support. Only just over $3 billion of that went into healthcare. And of that $3 billion, just about 250 million of it went into long-term care facilities. And you say, okay, Fury, well, that was early days. That was March. We learned a bit more. What did they announce in April, May, June, July, August, and so forth? Not much, not at all. One would think there would be historic investments in healthcare all across the country. It is true that there were some field hospitals that, uh, that were created by various different regional health hubs to deal with an overflow of patients, things that they built in parking lots and so forth. A few of them are already online and for the most part actually haven't been able to, haven't needed to be used yet. But what about when it comes to propping up nursing homes, supporting them, bringing in more goods, material and so forth? Well, there's been a few little investments here and there and Actually, in November, they announced about $50 million to train an extra over 3,000 people to work in these facilities. But hold on, they're, they're just announcing that now in November, and there really wasn't any comparable announcement prior to that. And, oh, I don't know, the summer when we actually had a lot of time to hunker down and prepare for the second wave and prepared where it really mattered in terms of actually addressing the problem. Instead, you hear Ontario Premier Doug Ford and others bleeding on about, oh, there's not going to be a Christmas, and you can't see your family, you can't do this, you can't do that. More lockdowns. People calling for more lockdowns. Not enough people, though, calling to actually tackle where the doctors who are interacting with coronavirus patients in the hospital tell you is the hot spot and where we actually need to target, which is long-term care. It's a real failure, and it really is a scandal that a lot of regular folks are being told, no, you can't do your fitness class or what have you. They are being punished largely for government's failure to actually pinpoint and address the real issues that they've already known for quite some time. Profoundly disappointing.